Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. <laughs> With Cal Schweel. What a specimen. And Joel Nelson. Whoa, this is an absolute monster. <laughs> This is In-Depth Outdoors. On today's episode of In-Depth Outdoors, we're in North Central Minnesota and we are on borrowed time to get in any more ice shows yet this season. With the warm weather we've had, we are losing ice at a very fast rate. But there's a couple of species we really want to cover yet here in 2016 where the bite gets so much better as we get towards ice out. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to be covering a species that grows large, can exceed 10 pounds in the right bodies of water. It's an incredible predator and it feeds voraciously under the cover of darkness. Now, if you think I'm talking about a walleye, you'd be completely wrong. We're talking about a species that has absolutely exploded in popularity here the last couple years. So do stick around. You're gonna to love tonight's show here on In-Depth Outdoors. So here's the arsenal for the evening. Uh, I think the best thing about uh, fishing for eel pout is if you like to fish for walleyes, you've already got everything you need. Uh, some high fish pros and your walleye sticks and you're good to go. Yeah, I completely agree with you, James. You know, so uh, talking with Chad, uh, he fishes out here all the time, kind of has a good pulse on what these fish like and what they don't like. Uh, large jigs with a real bright glow, uh, spoons with that real bright glow. And you were saying you position those baits just an inch or two above bottom. Yep, yep, just like that, inch or two above bottom because these burbot, they're swimming really close to the bottom, so it's right in their own house. So, and, and that's with the iFish Pros. Then, of course, with one rod each, we'll be out here jigging. And these fish yep. actually respond very well to a jig bait. And you were saying that one of the larger fish you've had in the last week was 12, 13 pounds? Yeah, biggest one is pushing 13 pounds out here, so. That's giant. That will put up a heck of a tussle. So we've got all of our rods rigged and ready to go. We've got a couple of spoons. Uh, we've got two, three jigs, and we're gonna put kind of an assortment of iFish Pros. I think you've got the an idea to put one eye fish pro up uh, shallow and then move one down a little bit deeper and then we can jig around that? Yeah, we'll cover all the all the depth range here up to 12 feet all the way down to 24, 25 feet of water, so cover it all. So here, I mean, here's the spoons we're talking about. We've got uh, that big white back that you were talking about. Glow that up every 10, 15 minutes throughout the night yep. and then position that a couple inches off the bottom with a couple of shiners. Here's some of the big jigs that you're talking about. Again, that white glow. What do you put on it? Two or three shiners? Yeah, two or three shiners. I'll rip them in half and just feed them up through the hook. Sounds real good. All right, so if we grab two each, we should be ready to go. I agree. Let's do it. Come on, this one and this one. Perfect. But the only real trick to any of this is just getting these baits placed. We're going to cover our bases. We're going to have some of these iFish Pros staggered throughout the depth ranges here, and then we're going to be able to hop around with the jig rods. And one of the interesting things that Chad said was, as these fish have gotten closer and closer to the spawn, they become more and more aggressive. A couple of weeks ago, when he first started catching these fish, he was catching a lot more of them on the set lines on the iFish Pros. And now, because the fish are so aggressive in the middle of the spawn, it seems like those fish want that jigged bait, which nobody's gonna argue about that out here tonight. Right there. You know, I've not caught a lot of these eel pout, certainly nothing like Chad, uh, but when I have caught them, they're definitely not dainty fish. They never get uh, too picky about the meals offered. And if I was an eel pout, that big wad of shiners down there, I've got uh, three of them on there, I'd eat that. Here 
go, James. Hooked up. Got him, boy. <laughs> Grab that deucer. It's getting wrapped in it. Absolutely. Are you all right? Oh boy. One time this way. There we go. We're straight. Yep. Nice pump. Oh, what a fatty. There we go. <laughs> what a cool fish, that. man. <laughs> Where do you hold? Where's the handle on these things? <laughs> I lip them right like a bass. <laughs> Why, Why not? not huh? You know? How's he hooked? Not that Got bad. Got All right, cool. What a That's beautiful fish. That's the way fish. to get it started. Beautiful colors on them. Leopard not, print fish. Yeah. Not the biggest one we'll catch tonight, but start. Absolutely. Well, way to play the home field advantage. Get the, get the ball rolling. Yep. Release him back here. It's greasy. <laughs> Bye. I know a lot of guys like to eat them. Are you, are you, you like to eat them? I, I think they taste great. If you can find that good average, you know, 20 to 25 inches is a good fish okay. to eat. So probably that size a little smaller. Yeah, that'd be a good keeper there if I was keeping fish now. Gotcha. So you just had basically just sitting right on the bottom? Yep, just bouncing right off the bottom two or three inches off and just gotcha. sucked it in, so. All right. Well, I'd give you some bait if I had any, but I don't have any, so it's a trip to the cooler. Nearly 70 years ago, a simple idea was taking form in the heart of the ice belt. That idea was, if you combined a commitment to quality with a passion for the sport of ice fishing, you could build a better ice auger. From that idea, Strike Master was born, forever committed to innovation in the quest to build a lighter, more durable auger. Strike Master, powerful, durable, reliable. The WX2060 and the MX2040 from Skeeter Boats. Loaded with a long list of standard features anglers want at an unbeatable price, including a Yamaha VMAX SHO250 horsepower outboard, Yamaha T9.9 .9 kicker with remote controls, Lowrance HDS12 Gen 3 Touch at the dash, and a Minn Kota 112 Ultera on the bow. The WX2060 priced at $59,995. The new MX2040 priced at $58,995. More comfort, more standard features. When you move up to a WX2060 or MX2040, you get more of everything. VMC's dominating line of panfish baits just got even better. With the introduction of new baits molded from high-density tungsten, the Miracle Metal that offers the same weight as traditional lead at half the size. The platoon of new baits include the Tungsten Fly, fast-thinking VMC Nymph and Waxtail Soft Baits pre-rigged on VMC Tungsten Jigs, and the innovative Tungsten Chandelier Jig that targets roaming panfish like a fish-seeking missile. The next time you hit the ice, tie on a tungsten, and you'll be fishing fast and taking names with VMC. How long have you been fishing the burbot out here? Um, I've been on the bite here about two or three weeks now. Really seems to start to peak about the time game fish closes? Yeah, right about the time all the walleye guys head home and sit on the couch all day, we're out here catching burbots. Very cool. Yep. I know from looking Ooh. at the map, did you just get bumped? Yeah, I got bumped there at the bottom. From looking at the map, this is the same kind of stuff that a walleye guy would camp on all winter long. Yeah, exactly. So how'd you get started fishing the burbot, you know, overall? Well, one day me and my buddy were out here walleye fishing, something very particular to this, and we ran into a big school of burbot, late ice like this, and um, ever since then I've been hooked, trying to target them, figure out ways to catch them, areas to fish them, and so on, and I've just been hooked ever since. They are a cool looking fish, man. They're beautiful. Oh, I just got bumped, hit it, come on. Pretty common for them to do that, just come in and just yep, poke yep, at it. Bill knows it. Usually they'll come by a second round and smoke it. Yeah, he bumped me, but it was not very hard. I mean, it was one of those where it just kind of felt like he just grabbed on a part of that shiner and that was it. You there dirty you dog. <laughs> <laughs> Home field advantage, you're two up on me. <laughs> Assuming you land him. Come on, baby. Just picked it up right off the bottom there. So that's kind of the technique, huh? You're just yeah, kind of just... picking it up and pounding it on the bottom? Yeah, like I said, you'll just pick it right up off the bottom. Oh, and it's a nice one. It's a nice one. Is he wrapped around? A little bit, a little bit. 
Come on, some better. Oh yeah! <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Just a pig. <laughs> Beautiful fish. What do you suppose something like that weighs? Uh, Six, eight? Yeah, probably pushing in seven pound range. They are such a cool looking fish. You need a pointer? I got him there, yeah. Yeah. Like you said, all muscle. Yeah, straight muscle. He must have come over here. Basically grabbed it, took a nip at mine, and then just scooted over and Saw my jig. lit you up. I got my jig a little more glowed than yours, James. Maybe. Look at this. Look at the stomachs on these things. Just fat. Oh, gosh. So now that's about seven pounds, and you've had them out here yep. almost twice that big. Yeah, we've had pushing 13 pounds out here for nice fish, but this is still a very beautiful fish for here. So. I can see why you like them, pal. Beautiful colors on them. God. So would you say that's like 30, yeah. 32? Yeah, pushing that 30 range, 30, 31-ish. Nice. So when you clean one, you keep the tail uh, portion and then the back strap on each side? Yeah, you don't go very deep into the stomach. There's not much there at all. Mostly gotcha. just the top of the fish and into the tail a little bit. It tastes delicious. Cheap man's lobster, they say. I love it. <laughs> now I just want to catch one. Yeah, let's go. <clears throat> Bye. <laughs> that is a cool looking fish. That was very cool. All right, next time he does a flyby on you and then he hits mine. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. We'll see. <laughs> It's all about the glow, right? Yep. Actually, I had the other half of that minnow on there, and of course, he ripped that part off and came over. You mine. caught him. Yep. I'm gonna get some bait and glow up. You need bait? Yeah, I'm gonna grab some too. All right. They must stay pretty close. I mean, that fish just coming up hit me, and he's back up underneath it again. They don't go very far after they take a swipe at it. Oh, come on! I'm being Here humiliated. <laughs> it's a 3-0 eel pout route. You are just talking about it. <laughs> Feels pretty nice. This is what uh, you call home field advantage. <laughs> I'm that getting my came, hinder kicked. That one came right off the bottom, about three or four feet, like you were just talking about. I can't, uh, I can't blame anybody but myself because I've had my chances. I just got done glowing that jig too. Yep. Just about every time I get one of those up hits or you know have a fish come in and charge hard It's right after you glow it up. God, this commander just manhandles these fish. <laughs> yeah. When you get on a good school They're just so fun to catch Nothing better. Well, Love it. You know, we'll go a few minutes where neither of neither. Oh, that's a wide fish big fish He wants to run again Bye fish He's doing the burbot roll <laughs> Come here, baby. <laughs> oh, look at this <laughs> Look at that thing <laughs> You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a fish that was assembled of, out of like mismatched parts. <laughs> Beautiful though. <laughs> they are. They just don't re resemble anything else in fresh water, you know? No, they're different. Here's your fish, man. What a cool, cool fish. They must be like a really prehistoric fish. I think so, yeah. Straight muscle. Look at that tail just curl. <laughs> Well, you know, the small ones, that's what everybody always talks about, you know, uh, they'll kind of curl up your arm, but these one, these big ones really can't do it. They no, can't they get, can't. you know, wrapped up around you at all. <clears throat> I think this one's pre-spawned, so I don't, think it, I don't think it dropped its load yet. I think it's a big female. Understood. Yeah. What would you say, that one's eight, nine pounds? Yeah, I'll probably push that eight, nine pound mark, 32 inches or so. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish, yeah. Well, that's what you said when we came out here tonight. You said uh, you're ready to get slimed up, and now I can kind of appreciate what you meant. Yeah, my mom doesn't like me coming home with pout slimy sweatshirts <laughs> when she washes them, but hey. hey. It's all good fun, right? What can you do? There's a lot worse stuff a guy could be doing. Exactly, that's a nice fish. Say we get him back. <sighs> Just curled up. Come on, baby. <laughs> Go to your home. <laughs> that's cool. See ya. All right, now it's officially my turn. All right. That's awesome, man. Let's get back at it. At Markham, we know being the leader in ice sonar performance doesn't mean we get to rest on our laurels. Introducing the new iSeries line of flashers. Every model in our new iSeries line combines a bright and vivid display with Markham's advanced sonar technology to produce flasher sonar units that offer a larger display and increased viewing angles without compromising Markham's legendary sonar performance. This winter, don't settle for anything less than an iSeries flasher from Markham, the most powerful high-performance flasher sonar units ever built.
VMC's dominating line of panfish baits just got even better. With the introduction of new baits molded from high-density tungsten, the Miracle Metal that offers the same weight as traditional lead at half the size. The platoon of new baits include the Tungsten Fly, fast-sinking VMC Nymph and Waxtail soft baits pre-rigged on VMC tungsten jigs, and the innovative tungsten chandelier jig that targets roaming panfish like a fish-seeking missile. The next time you hit the ice, tie on a tungsten, and you'll be fishing fast and taking names with VMC. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods. Ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. I got one working here. Come on. Got him. There you go. Put that booster out of there. Unfortunately, I don't think he's going to be the giant. Did I got to start somewhere. You come Whoa. up off. <laughs> I'm using a little bit lighter gear than you are. Wow. You pick it up on the bottom or did you get a mop off? No, he, it's like, I don't know how many times I've had a fish do that exact same thing tonight. Four or five times maybe. And that was just the first one that decided to eat it. I'd say four feet off the bottom when he finally ate it. Huh. A little bit aggressive fish. Yeah. Well, I've got a precision, like a 34 inch precision here, which is a lot lighter rod than that commander of yours. And I don't have quite the uh, pulling power that you do. There he is. I'm on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Nice fish, James. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to pin that one down and get that hook out. There we go. God, they just got tiny little eyes. Everything must be sense of smell and feel, huh? You can just lip them like a bass. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> that one must be a male, huh? Yeah, or or yeah. spawned out female? <clears throat> I would guess a male. Yep. Very cool. A lot more narrower than the females, you know. It's like they got the tail of a bowfin, they got the head of a salamander. I mean, it's just all, it's just a cool fish. It is. <laughs> and that one, that one probably weighs about half as much as the last one that you caught. Very good fight, though. Yeah, for sure. All right, we'll let that one go. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> hey, you. First there male you of the night. Oh, hey, nice fish. Thank you. <sighs> this is so much like walleye fishing. I mean, it's walleye locations, it's walleye gear, it's walleye baits, just after the walleye season closes. Exactly. You know, what else would you be doing, right? Yeah. Every time hooking up with one of these, it's like hooking up into a 30 inch walleye. I mean, fight's just the same. Well, what would you say that fish weighed there? Four, maybe five pounds? Yeah, probably just four pounds. And I love my walleye fishing, but those fight better than walleyes. Exactly, yeah. Addicting. Yes, it is. All right, I need some bait. Take a swipe at you? Yeah, it's so light. Always oh, racing for it. Come on. Here we go, James. Dude! <laughs> I didn't even get my gloves back on. I'm still waiting for my hands to dry. Let's go. <laughs> uh, seems like one of those. They're all Lower good. 30 inch fish here. This is nuts. I had no idea you could catch so many in one sitting. Here he yep, is coming it's up. It's a giant. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, you. Burbot roll. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is crazy. <laughs> Come here, burbot. The weather's great. The fish are fat and heavy. Here, you take them. That one's got a love mark or whatever, a birthmark on it or whatever it is. Oh, just greasy. 
It's very awkward holding these fish, very awkward. Every end is tapered. There's no real good place to grab them. <laughs> I can see why you like doing this so much. Yeah, it's very fun. You know, even uh, losing a little sleep, sitting out here on the ice, catching big fish, giggling. Nothing wrong with that. Gosh. I would imagine the top speed on a fish like that is about four and a half miles an hour. <laughs> Probably doesn't move very quick. <laughs> Probably not. They fight pretty good though. They do, yeah. That's the main reason I come out here late at night and mm -hmm. target these fish. Very distinctive bite. Yep. Now they do have a lot of tail. I mean, you were right. They're kind of thin through the back section, but the tail starts about, you know, halfway. Exactly, yeah, power, back. pure power. Yep. Good deal. Very nice. Well, I'm gonna get this fish back and we'll go at it again here. <clears throat> come on, baby. It's like every 10, 15 minutes, a couple, two or three of them will come through and <laughs> yeah, they're not shy. They're hungry. <sighs> so let's talk about peak bite windows. I mean, we got out here before the sun set we had everything in place and we didn't see a lot of activity right away. And as we're out here later and later, it just seems to get better and better. Is that normal? It is, yeah. The peak is right around that 8 to 9 p.m. window. And from there on out, it's just game on. You better have a rod in your hand and pound in the bottom because it's hot till about 2 in the morning, so. Gotcha. I'm willing to lose some sleep. I don't think we'll be here at 2 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> but we'll see. You never know. <laughs> I might stay out here and just keep the fish company, but. I hear you. I'm gonna get some bait here and we'll go at it. <clears throat> This winter, set a trap for your next trophy with iFish Pro. Ideal for all species, iFish Pro is an innovative fishing system that allows an angler to use their favorite rod and reel instead of trying to manage the fish hand over hand. Oh, right Complete your ice fishing arsenal with iFish Pro, tactical ice gear that puts the fight back into tip up fishing. Look at that. Find oh, iFish Pro go. online at iFishPro.com or at your favorite sporting goods retailer. Everything you'd expect from a premium quality fish house and so much more. Glacier combines superior craftsmanship and premium quality materials to produce a comfortable and enjoyable mobile base camp for your next outdoor adventure. Available in a variety of models, a Glacier Ice House offers more standard features, more usable space, and a better fit and finish than the competition. Visit our website at GlacierIceHouse.com to find a dealer near you and see why a Glacier Fish House is the ultimate way to play. Nearly 70 years ago, a simple idea was taking form in the heart of the ice belt. That idea was, if you combined a commitment to quality with a passion for the sport of ice fishing, you could build a better ice auger. From that idea, StrikeMaster was born. Forever committed to innovation in the quest to build a lighter, more durable auger. StrikeMaster. Powerful. Durable. Reliable. Good green glow. Oh! When you talk about pounding the bottom, <laughs> you just come up and the fish is there. It's basically uh, doing everything you're not supposed to do when you're jig fishing, you know? You just kind of lose control of the bait, you don't know where it's at, you lift it up and there it is. Here it comes. Head up. Yes! <laughs> That is a nice fish. Look at that. We're starting to catch them by the, the ton here. <laughs> Poundage. That is sweet. Oh, what a gorgeous fish. Here me, you go, let me sir. Feel. I don't know if my cold hands can hold it. <laughs> I'll let you have that one. That is so cool. This is, without a doubt, the most eel pot I've ever caught in one night. That camouflage has just got to be perfect when they're down there in the rocks. Yep. They must be so hard to see. You know, we had some wind earlier, I mean, not bad, but now that it's kind of settled down, things have gotten calm, the bite just seems to be getting better and better. Yeah, as the night goes on. <sighs> Thanks for the assist, I appreciate it. You're very welcome, I'm, my turn to catch one. <laughs> Good for you. Need help? Here you go, yeah. <sighs> Doesn't seem like the nicest fish, but. Not a giant? Not a giant by any means. Well, you've been on a bit of a tear as far as uh, those big fish are concerned. <laughs> I'm due for a small one here and there. <laughs> here we go. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, I'd take that average if that was a walleye any day. Come here. Oh, he's slimy. <laughs> well, I thought she was going to be uh, small enough where I could get my hands behind her head and just pick her up like a plank, but she's so fat. Okay, I'll take that. Got her? 
choked it. Well, I don't know what the rest of the people are doing, but uh, this is a pretty good way to spend an evening. Isn't this fun? This is. Uh, there we go. What would you guess, that, uh, four pounds? Yeah. Maybe, maybe a little more? I mean, it feels like holding a four pound bass in the summer. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, pushing that four pound range. I mean, they got the same kind of teeth too. You can, yeah. I mean, you can if you if you handle 30, 40 of them a day, you get that bass thumb deal. You know, where exactly. the skin is all wore yep. off. Feels the exact same. This is about your average out here. Okay. Probably that three, four, or five pound range. So, I would assume that that is a really healthy average size. It is. Yeah. yeah. They just will not relax like a bass or a walleye. No, they're always they always got to be doing something when you're holding them. Big tense muscle. Exactly. <laughs> you gotta wrestle him into a hole. <laughs> See ya. Whoa! <laughs> I got a bad case of slip and drag. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Another case of just sit it on the bottom and lift the rod tip up and there it is. There's nothing to it. I think any fisherman could come and do this if they wanted to. Nothing crazy that we're doing. No let your bait lay on the bottom and come back after uh, you know going eat a sandwich or something. Exactly. There's a fish there. <laughs> oh, that's a nice one. Not crazy big, but still. This, but I'm excited to get this one because this is the one I want to take home for supper. I told myself when I came out here tonight that I was gonna come here. take one home, and that is the one. Perfect. That's a perfect eater right there. Three pounds, it. four pounds. I have had so much fun tonight. I have too. I appreciate it so much. It's been a good time. You know, for everybody watching at home. It is so much fun for me to watch an evolution in people's attitudes towards such a great fish. I mean, I gotta be honest with you, my generation has not been as kind to this fish as Chad's. Uh, when I was growing up, people treated the eel pout like something to be discarded. Yep. But now that I've had a chance to get out here and really experience what it's all about, I would never consider doing anything like that. Uh, they're a tremendous predator. Uh, you've seen the action tonight, the fight, and the size of the fish that's possible. I really appreciate you taking the time to share it with me. Not a it was problem. A blast. Yeah. <clears throat> so, we don't have a lot of time left here with the ice fishing season, obviously. Uh, most of the night tonight, we've had just kind of a, uh, a misty rain just slowly falling down here on the sheet of ice. It's not going to last long. We might get another ice show, maybe two, but beyond that, we're probably going to have to pull the plug for the season. So. It won't be too much longer, and you'll be seeing us out there in the boat instead of out there on the ice. So uh, from Chad and I, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at In-Depth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.